What we're really trying to achieve here is to modernize from edge to cloud. We are becoming a data-driven, AI-focused organization. This is an industrial revolution, and it's the fastest one yet. You will not be put out of your business by AI. You will be put out of your business by somebody else that uses AI faster. The hybrid cloud solution has helped us build that resilient environment. Becoming a data-driven, AI-focused organization has allowed us to really change the face of gaming. HP GreenLake has really taken the burden off of our company to provide insights that can actually change the way healthcare is delivered for moms across the world. What we're creating here with HPE is a smart city, a data-driven environment, but it's equally about how we're taking that data and turning it into critical intelligence. Please welcome Executive Vice President, General Manager, Hybrid Cloud, and Chief Technology Officer, Fidelma Russo. Buenos dias a todos. Bienvenidos a Discover Barcelona. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a great Discover, and I hope you really enjoyed the fiesta last night. And I truly appreciate you coming here this morning to listen to the keynote. So, in a world increasingly defined by data-driven insights and intelligent automation, we stand at the threshold of a remarkable transformation. And at the heart of this transformation stands innovation, ours and yours. So this morning, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about how you can unlock your innovation using the HPE hybrid cloud portfolio. You'll get a good sense of the compelling capabilities of the HPE GreenLake platform, some of the innovations that are happening within our hybrid cloud portfolio, and within the CTO office here at HPE. You'll also get a glimpse of what's driving our roadmap for the future and hear directly from some of our customers who are using the platform from edge to cloud and also using it for AI. Now, as you heard yesterday, we now live in a world where AI will enable us to create new solutions to some of our biggest societal challenges and accelerate business transformation across every industry. And HPE is playing a prominent role in this shift. We're leveraging our unique ability to build, supply, and support AI native architectures. And we bring it all to you on the HPE GreenLake platform and drive differentiation through our hybrid cloud portfolio. First, let's talk about why a unified platform is necessary in the first place and what problem we're trying to solve. Yesterday, Antonio talked about the digital transformation that many of us have been on. And many years ago, 20 or more, all data was in a data center or a co-location facility. And as technology has evolved, so has the ability to process and store data generated by edge devices. And in fact, there's been an explosion of devices, applications, and, app and workloads at the edge. And today, applications and workloads are highly distributed, resulting in more than 50% of data being created at the edge. Today's world is decidedly hybrid, and that introduces new requirements. A hybrid cloud environment delivers a cloud experience everywhere no matter where the data and applications reside. This consistent experience provides enterprises with the agility and flexibility to adapt to diverse operational needs. It ensures seamless visibility and control over data and workloads. And additionally, the hybrid model facilitates simplification and automation of processes streamlining complex workflows and enhancing overall operational efficiency. And to truly leverage and drive differentiated business outcomes in this hybrid world, you will need to securely connect with your data across all locations, 
process that data in real time, no matter where it is, protect the data across the enterprise, and then orchestrate your workloads across your edge locations, private clouds, and public clouds. At HPE, we recognized early on the need for one unified platform with services to run, manage, and secure your distributed enterprise. And we've been busy building, partnering, and acquiring services and technologies that empower our customers to manage their hybrid cloud environments. So let's take a look at how one customer is leveraging the power of the HPE GreenLake platform to address the challenges in this hybrid world. Bell Food Group is one of Europe's leading food manufacturers. We are spread across 15 countries in Europe. Data is really uh, an asset for us. We have a gold mine of data in our factories. With data, we can optimize processes, we can see bottlenecks in our logistic processes, we can enhance all these processes, we can track where we have issues. You need platforms to be able to process all this data. In today's complex world, we have workloads everywhere. We have workloads in a public cloud, we have workloads on-prem, we have workloads on the edge, and it makes it difficult for the IT department to manage all, all those workloads. With HP GreenLake, we have really one single point of entry, one single source where all our infrastructure is managed, and this covers everything. It covers our, our global data center, but also the small data centers we have across Europe. It covers the edge, it covers everything, and that's really huge for our people. We are really in good hands with HP. Great. So with that, I'd like to join me on the stage to share their experience. The head of technology and digitalization of the Bell Food Group, Valerie Thomas. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Valeri had a pretty tough journey here, got delayed, <laughs> but yet made it to the Fiesta and made it here this morning. Exactly. So welcome, yeah. welcome. Thank you. So uh, people may not know a lot about the Bell Food Group, uh, but you are actually fairly, uh, you know, in many, many countries and locations in Europe. So can you tell us a little bit about the Food Group and the challenges you were all facing and why you chose a hybrid cloud model? Yeah, sure. So we are one of the leading food manufacturers in Europe. As I said in the video, uh, we have uh, 64 locations across 15 countries in Europe. Uh, and we're producing a lot of different uh, kind of foods. So we're starting with fresh meat, uh, sausages, uh, Spanish ham uh, that we're producing in Spain in our new factory. Uh, we are producing also vegetables, salads, uh, fruits, uh, pasta, pizza. So a lot of convenience products. So we have a really wide range of products. And uh, when it comes to, to hybrid cloud, I think we have two main challenges. Uh, the first of one is technological, so um, we have a lot of systems that need a small latency, right? So on the production, on the shop floor, you need really small latency, so uh, public cloud is not a question, it's not really uh, possible. Um, we need to have workloads on the edge, we need to have workloads in the factory. So um, our design is uh, that we have one central data center where we manage all the global applications and um, small data centers on the edge. And uh, this, is, this is one challenge, making sure that everything works. Um, and the second challenge is uh, people. Uh, finding, I think a lot of people here uh, have the same issue, finding the right system engineers today is really difficult. I mean, we're in Switzerland, we are competing with uh, pharmaceutical industries, with banking, so a uh, much bigger player than, uh, than we are. Uh, so finding the right people is difficult and keeping them is difficult. So if you find the right people with the, with the right uh, knowledge, uh, they don't want to operate uh, the infrastructure, right? They, have, they want to, to do yeah, nice projects, they want to have fun, they want to do engineering. So um, yeah, when it came to, to renew our infrastructure in, in, in the life cycle, um, we discussed with the HPE team and we, we saw that the HP GreenLake uh, hybrid cloud uh, model was actually a perfect fit for what we were doing. 
And so you've, you've explained a little bit, Valerie, why you chose it, but what does kind of allow you to do now with the rest of your infrastructure? I mean, um, we are producing really fresh products. We are, when we're talking about fresh meat or fresh salad, it's something that comes in in the morning and that has to be delivered to the customer, to the supermarkets on the same day, right? So uh, if we have a massive IT outage and the production is stopped, it means the, the, the risk is you go to the supermarket in the morning, you want to buy fresh meat, but there's no meat, right? The shelf is empty. So this is, this is really a huge challenge, making sure everything works, making sure that uh, the infrastructure is reliable, that it's stable, and, uh, and yeah, working almost every day of the year. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really a huge challenge. And um, of course, the hybrid cloud solution, as opposed to the, to the old way of buying hardware, uh, you're much more flexible, right? You're scalable. Uh, you can and you can have the workloads where you need them. You can have the workloads on the on the factory. Um, and last thing, yeah, we decided to to go for the managed services uh, exactly because of this challenge of the of, of the talents of the of the system engineers. Because uh, yeah, we wanted to have one partner managing our basic infrastructure and making sure everything run, runs smoothly. Yeah? And I think it was interesting the other day when we were chatting. It doesn't really come to mind that if there is an IT outage, there could be empty shelves at the supermarket. Exactly. So that just shows how the whole world is connected now. Yeah. And now that you have your infrastructure covered uh, and you can manage your workloads, how are you thinking about AI and AI in the, in the context of your business? I mean, even in the food manufacturing, which is not a real uh, digital business uh, when, you, when you think about it, but even there, uh, AI can be a real game changer. Uh, it can be a real competitive advantage, so I, I, I won't disclose what we're working about, but um, yeah, we are looking about a lot of technologies. Um, first of all is uh, computer vision for product recognition, for quality insurance, where we're working with the HP uh, colleagues together. Uh, the second one that comes to mind is the predictive maintenance, because yeah, we were talking about outages. You can have outages in the IT, but you can also have outages on the production, right, on the, on the machine. So if you are able to predict or, or to prevent these outages, you, you get better. And uh, the, last of the, the, the last is, of course, uh, large language models. Yeah? We discussed with the, with the HP partner, Aleph Alpha. Uh, we are already discussing some, yeah, some interesting projects that we could do. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. And so how would you, you know, what would you like to see us do in HP GreenLake with regards to AI for the future? <laughs> That's a, a really interesting question. Um, I mean, I've, I've worked with a lot of data scientists, we probably all did. Uh, really brilliant people. Uh, they have a lot of great ideas, really, that could, c can really make us reach the next level, right? But um, as soon as their model is working, <laughs> it's like they're running out of the building to find new challenges, to find new projects. Yeah? They, they are not interested in operating the system. But uh, you have to see if, if, if an AI model is implemented into a production process, it has to work. It has to work 24 seven. And uh, I don't know any data scientist who wants to stand up at four in the morning because the, proce the production process is not working. So uh, definitely we need someone to be able to do those operations. So MLOps would probably be a really interesting thing for us in the future. Okay, well, that's, that's great, great input, Valerie. And so uh, thank you again for coming and joining us here. And uh, thank you for the difficult journey. And I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, Fidema. Thank, thank you, thank you. So as we have seen, Bell Food Group is using hybrid cloud environments to manage and optimize their workloads and data. And at HPE, we have built a hybrid cloud portfolio that is able to support our customers in their transformational journey. And it allows our customers to modernize their IT estates by offering flexible and scalable compute and storage solutions running in bare metal virtual machine or container configuration. It allows you to simplify your IT operations with a complete software portfolio that is multi-vendor and multi-cloud. And we secure your hybrid workloads, your data, and your AI models. 
Now, as Valerie mentioned, one of the main workloads for the next decade or more is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a transformative force, and the adoption of AI is an increasing imperative for companies looking to thrive in today's and tomorrow's business landscape. It will disrupt nearly every industry. Its capacity to analyze vast data sets, identify patterns, and make data-driven predictions has already begun reshaping traditional business models. It introduces innovations that optimize processes, enhance decision-making, and unlock unprecedented opportunities for growth and innovation. It's also changing how we live and work. As AI technologies advance, they redefine the way we interact with information. They automate routine tasks, and we make better decisions. And as we integrate AI into our homes and workplaces, its influence extends beyond mere automation, fostering a new era where technology truly augments human capabilities. Before the surge of generative AI in the last year, deep learning played a vital role in tasks such as image and pattern recognition. And this has actually served as the backbone for diverse applications, including defect detection, medical image analysis, and object detection in autonomous vehicles. And its foundational role set the stage for the emergence of generative AI. From the classroom to the boardroom, generative AI has democratized access to artificial intelligence across various sectors of our lives. Education leverages generative AI for content creation, making learning materials adaptive. In finance, it refines algorithms and trading strategies, optimizing decisions. And agriculture benefits from crop planning optimization, elevating yield and efficiency. And in healthcare, generative AI enhances diagnostics through medical image synthesis. These examples that we can all relate to underscore the versatility of Gen AI, bringing innovation and efficiency within reach and makes this the transformative technology of our generation. AI, from machine learning to Gen AI, will be ubiquitous. AI is critically dependent on data, and it will run everywhere from edge to cloud. It is a hybrid workload, and it must run on a hybrid cloud infrastructure. And the HPE GreenLake platform is the only hybrid cloud infrastructure that allows customers to deliver on their AI strategies while modernizing their IT infrastructures, simplifying their IT operations, and protecting their hybrid environments from end to end. And as I talk with customers who are all under pressure to deliver AI workloads to their business, several common questions emerge. The first question that's asked is, how do I ensure that I am using Gen AI in an ethical and safe way? The next one is, how do I pick the right infrastructure? Once I have the infrastructure, what is the right management and operations software stack? And today, I'd like to unpack each of these top of mind questions and explore how HPE GreenLake is working to solve these problems in an integrated, holistic manner. We must start first with how to ethically and safely use Gen AI. To adopt Gen AI at scale, innovation is not just desirable, it's imperative. And companies need forward-looking solutions to address the complexities of data privacy, then you want a hybrid deployment because we want to be able to use both public cloud models and also models that we train on-prem. We also want the ability to integrate these Gen AI models into our business processes. So in the CTO office at HPE, our innovation team has been obsessively focused on creating a HPE GreenLake cloud application to enable our internal developers 
to safely use generative AI models. And I want to give you a little peek behind the curtain on a project that they have been working on. Project Ethan is an application that is equipped with robust guardrails. It ensures compliance with data privacy reg regulations, and it facilitates smooth and secure AI interactions, from simply using chat to using APIs to create new use cases. It enables the use of various models, either on-prem or in the public cloud, and it removes the complexities in setting up the various environments depending on where your model is running. But finally, because it is on the HPE GreenLake Cloud Platform, we deliver authentication, authorization, and metering out of the box. Project Ethan is the tip of the spear where the AI journey begins. So now that you've decided on your governance, you need to determine the right infrastructure and software for your AI workload. And again, this is not an easy answer. And we must get grounded in the various stages of the AI lifecycle in order to answer that question. And the first thing in the lifecycle is we need to develop or we need to choose the model we're going to use. Then we train or we retrain the model with large, diverse data sets so that the model learns to recognize patterns and information. Then we tune the model so we can get the optimal performance for the context that we are running in. The next thing that happens is prompt engineering, which I'm sure all of us have heard about as the next career for everybody. And this is where us, as humans, have a role to play. And that's where we craft questions to guide the model's output. And finally, inference is where it all comes together. The trained model, it's tuned for a specific context, it uses particular prompts, and it gives us the answer that we're looking for. Now, each step in this life cycle has different infrastructure and performance requirements, and each step costs a different amount of money. So we have a lot of choices to make. And the other thing is, very few of us are involved in all phases of this life cycle. So your infrastructure needs are heavily influenced by whether you are training models, tuning models, or using models. And so the answer to what is the right infrastructure, well, it depends on where you are in the life cycle. And the choices range from supercomputers for training, to servers for inference and tuning, to storage for your data needs. Now yesterday, Antonio announced availability of the enterprise Gen AI solution stack, co-engineered with NVIDIA and pre-configured specifically for enterprises to quickly fine-tune foundational models using private data that can be deployed anywhere. And AI is a data-hungry workload, and one of the biggest bottlenecks to training and tuning is storage. And yesterday, we also announced a significant update to our HPE GreenLake for file storage to address density and throughput demands for AI workloads. Engineered to provide high-performance file storage for AI, HPE GreenLake for file storage is optimized to keep pace with large-scale AI workloads. And with the upcoming enhancements, early first half of next year, we will increase the capacity density and throughput by 7x. HPE GreenLake for File is the next generation in the evolution of AI storage solutions, providing performance, scalability, and efficiency you need to stay ahead in today's fast-paced, fast-changing AI landscape. So, now that we've ethically and safely decided and put our governance in place, and we've thought about deploying our infrastructure, it's really just the first step. As Valerie said, we now have to run it. And so, we need to manage, observe, and protect not just our data, not just our workloads, but also our models. And we ideally need to do this from a single unified platform. 
And in order to make this real, let me bring my colleague Dennis Bilford onto the stage to show you how the HPE GreenLake platform is the hybrid cloud platform for AI. Well, Dennis, can you join us here for a few minutes? Here I am. How you doing, Fidelva? How are you doing, Dennis? All right. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Yay. Great. So glad you could make it, because I was a little nervous at the fiesta last night, you know? Oh. But I'm glad you're up here bright and early, and we're going to have some fun. We're already having fun. We're learning a lot. And you heard Fidelma talk about Project Ethan. And of course, that also runs on GreenLake, because at GreenLake, we have a button for that. So let's log in to GreenLake and see just what she was talking about. Here, we have a couple of buttons for you. We're going to go through in quick succession. First, let's start with the application. You heard Fidelma say that AI is really just a new workload. But boy, what a workload. We're not talking about your granddaddy's SQL Server anymore. We're talking about huge amounts of data and real-time processing. One of the things you've probably all played with is ChatGPT. Show of hands. How many people here tried ChatGPT? OK. Oh, a lot of you. Great. So isn't it fun how you can monkey with the prompt and get different answers? Yeah, but at ChatGPT, you only have one model. What we have created here is a guardrail-driven sort of wrapper around not one model, but many models. I'd like to show you that. We can change the model, ChatGPT, of course. We have the off-the-shelf 3.5 Turbo, and also the ChatGPT 4, with both runs in the cloud. But what about what Fidelma just talked about? Some of the more key workloads have to actually run on premises. Well, for that, we're working with Aleph Alpha. And what their guys, guys have is this luminous base model. Let me show you how easy it is to change models. First, well, we have ChatGPT 4, ChatGPT 5, and I just, uh, set, uh, just set that. Let's change the model. Here we go. ChatGPT 4. Let's grab that. Can you see at the bottom here it says ChatGPT 4? OK, let's ask it a question, a prompt, as we call it. OK, so let's prompt it. Uh, what does HPE do? And here's the answer, straight from the cloud. Well, we help people what? Oh, it appears that we help people achieve their goals using technology. Pretty well said with servers, storage services, financial services, the like. Pretty good answer. So what happens if we change the model to luminous base, a model that's, tra that's actually trained for a lot more precision? When you look at that model, let's go and give that a try. You can see it says luminous base at the bottom. Let's go and say, what does HPE do? Same question, same prompt. What's the answer? Here it is. Very succinct. Ah, what's the difference? The difference is that this model is trained differently than the other model. The other model is more, has more sort of flowery language, more verbose, which the way humans talk. This is more a scientific answer. And this is absolutely true because we are dealing with developers. Developers want to be using the cloud in their models. They want to be able to actually log on to it. And for that, we have another little feature. And the feature here is security. We've got to be able to trust what we do. And to do that, we have to generate the security token. Let me just show you that. What should we call it, by the way? Well, what about calling it Barcelona 2023? OK, so that's a, that's a, that's a label on my token. I set the expiration period. Security feature, again, what if I leave or on to another project? I don't want my secure tokens to lay out there for too long. So I let them age out after 30 days. So here we are, generate a token, boom. You see that string there? That string is actually unbelievably long. I couldn't remember it. Heck, I can't even remember my own phone number. Right? But here's the point, though. That is what a, a, a developer will use to prompt his or her model, either on premises or in the cloud, and do so securely. Because this unique identifier follows him or her. It's unique to them. So another person can't steal their work, can't go in and use a model they're not allowed to, and so forth. So this is security built into using uh, large language models. So there are the model that you can see here very nicely. The, 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 the uh, key, the security key is right there, and I can discard it or create more, and I'm only allowed to have two, so that's one of them. OK, so now, remember what Fidelma said, this is the application. But many of you here, right? Show of hands, how many people here are in ops? How many people here do ops? Ops? What? Oh, one, two, three. OK, you guys are on IT, right? So you have to recognize we need to have some gear running at the location. Where, well, we actually talked to one of our customers, and they said very clearly, you know what? That factory runs on the data in that factory. 
That's certainly true, too, for new workloads. So let's set up a private cloud, shall we? That seems to be a reasonable thing to do. We've already configured that. You're familiar with private cloud. You've probably seen the demos of private cloud before. I don't have a lot of time here. I could do the whole demo with this. But let me just show you one thing that's very important. You heard Antonio yesterday announcing a new server, a new system. You have a new system that's optimized for AI. And what does that mean? And this is key to understand. Back in the day, it used to be just a server, a little DRAM, a little storage, we're good to go. Today is predominantly GPU, lots of GPU. Do you have the GPU? And as you can see here, yes, we do. Those brand new servers, the DL380A has GPUs in there. Oops, I went a little too fast there. They're AI native, right? We have GPUs built in to the system, certified together with HPE and NVIDIA. OK, so that was just the beginning. Server, storage, networking, private cloud. Now, what else do we need? Well, what about the data? What about the fact that many of us are operating across many locations? Well, we need a global namespace. And Esmol Data Fabric certainly delivers that. So here we have Esmol Data Fabric, again, launched from GreenLake. And we have the ability to go in and take a look at the different clusters we have. And you can see right here in this little example, we actually have two HCI, hyperconverged infrastructure clusters on-prem, GPUs and all the, ready to go. Turns out that we also have two other instances. We had an NFS server, so we can actually publish and people can share the files. And we also have an instance that runs in AWS. Wait a minute, so you're telling me it's not just on-prem, but it's actually a function of many things. How do I visualize that? And the, the way to visualize that from the perspective of a global namespace is using not table view, but using graph view. It looks like this. Global namespace mapped out. Can you see this exactly what I said? And you notice to the right of this, we actually have different abstractions. We have volume abstractions, bucket abstractions, topics, and tables. What are they for? Well, volume is for file, for those of you who work with files. Buckets, for those of you who work with objects, if you just want an object store where you get and you, and you delete, right? And you, so you, you put, get, and all that. That kind of person, you want a bucket. And then you also, if you deal with streams, all you want is a topic. And for tables for things like NoSQL. NoSQL is like key value pairs, for example. Common delimited key value pairs all day long. These abstractions are beyond what we typically have seen in IT. We're used to seeing LUNs. We're used to seeing file systems. And here, we have new abstractions, all federated together with a global namespace. OK, so this is not just one cloud. It's hyper cloud, as you can see. The global namespace is across your sites, and it's across all your individual locations, whether they are Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, anything. All right, so public cloud, private cloud, very much a hyper cloud setup. So that took care of your data. So now we have it, right? Infrastructure, data, what else? But what about visibility? You're dealing essentially with a stack here. And that stack, if you can't see the problem, you can't fix the problem. So let, let's just go take a look at OpsRamp. Whoa, wait a minute. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a mapping. Notice again, these visual maps keep coming up. We're dealing with a mapping here of, of, of Kubernetes containers. Well, we can treat this whole entire deployment through a Kubernetes dashboard, all integrated with Kubernetes API. Well, what about if you say, well, not so fast. I'm not ready to go bare metal, Linux, Kubernetes. I actually want to put that in a VM, sort of crawl before I walk. Can I do that? And the answer, of course, is yes. So think about a VM when it comes to containers. It's a wrapper around the container stack. Yeah? And it turns out, well, that runs on hardware, too, and it runs in clusters. And in this case, you can see two clusters sharing an NFS mount, which very well could be coming from the Esmo data fabric. Are you beginning to see that this is sort of layer cake on top of each other, one thing above the other, above the next? And we are building essentially a whole AI stack out of individual components into one tool chain. OK, good. VMware, of course, has its own dashboard, again, API integrated. So, so now we are at step four here. What are we forgetting, guys? Are we forgetting something? Yeah, remember, your data, your models. These models, by the way, can take a long, long time to develop and train. I don't want to lose these. I want to protect them. What's the best protection I can get? If you say backup and restore, you're half right. The best protection is actually continuous data protection. 
And continuous data filtration works this way. I take incremental writes, put them in the Lucas height buffer, compress them, and send them to a target. Now, that target can be anything. It could be another site. It could be another building on the site. It could be somewhere else. As my friend used to say, there are only two states of data, Dennis. It's either here or somewhere else. Well, that somewhere else could very well be in the public cloud. But wait a minute. So you're saying the public cloud is nothing but a location? That's right. And we're dealing with a multi-location world, as you saw Fidelma show on her map. So at, by the way, you saw right there, 10 to 1 compression. Why do we compress? Because we don't want to tax the target with too much storage capacity, and we don't want to tax the interconnect between the two sites. Yeah? So if you look at this, we're really building hybrid clouds here. So this is AI across hybrid clouds, some on-prem, some somewhere else. Yeah? It could be colo, it can be public cloud, it can be anything. And here, you actually have a disaster recovery site and an Azure site. Let's take a look at that in a little more detail. Here we have a, a virtual protection group view of the world. You can see the file server is actually protected three different ways. Another way to look like that, if it's a VM, you can actually look at it this way. And look, sure enough, we have a VM protected as a file server VM. It's protected locally inside this location. And it's a DR site. And lo and behold, it's also copied to a cloud location. So think of it this way. Your incremental backup and data protection is an any-to-any -any experience. You have the ability actually to send here to there, because I know that if I've been hit by a flood or fire here, I have my data protected somewhere else. OK, great. So when you look at that, what is actually your recovery? Turns out, it, to, we have proven that we have roughly eight seconds of RPO. Eight seconds of RPO using Certo, any to any, across your entire distributed enterprise. Cool. So are we almost done? Yeah, we're sort of done with the infrastructure. But what about our developers? They're the ones we're building all this stuff for. What do they want to do? Well, if you talk to your developers lately, they treat what you are deploying as a service. That service they've learned from public cloud vendors, they don't need to worry about the hardware. They just want to consume it. And they want to consume a tool chain that is completely open and wide. So for that, we have the analytics, unified analytics platform. And what we do here is we actually keep track on what data services have you looked at? What data sources have you worked on? And what frameworks have you used to actually do the work? And as you can see here, the sort of cast of characters of the most popular ones, some from HPE and some from the internet. There's a lot of services on the internet. If you've seen lately a rundown of AI tools available, huh, are you kidding? There's hundreds, literally hundreds of tools. They're not all going to survive, but that's typical in an early stage of a new technology lifecycle, which is where we are right now. So we need to have the ability to see what's going on across the tool chain our developers are using. And we can also see how much it costs. We can see how much vCPU they're using, how much DRAM they're using, and how much GPU they're using. OK, good. So with that in mind, what tool chains do we have? And the answer is, while well, we have a whole bunch, I encourage you, by the way, to go out in the show floor and see this in more detail. But let me just show you uh, just the, 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 the frameworks. We have Airflow here, for example, very popular with a lot of developers. What about what else? Well, Spark, also very popular with a lot of developers. All integrated here at one stop shop, one home base, where you can actually curate and control which tools they're using and meter and monitor it. It's very nice. Now, you see here, there's things like Kubeflow, MLflow, all things flow, everything flows, right? But there's certainly also an HPE. There's the machine learning development environment. And if you ever clicked on that, if you ever played with that, we see this classic curve of machine learning. The classic curve of machine learning shows you the longer you train, the less you actually get in error. So this gives you a nice feedback how you run these batches. By the way, this is very analogous to the old mainframe days where you ran big batch jobs. And you keep doing it until you get 99.9% .9 assurance that your AI model can actually do what it's supposed to with new data it's never seen before. If you're following things like Tesla and how they're doing self-driving cars, this is exactly the work they're doing. OK, cool. So let's wrap this up with these big models. This is all about training big models. So you, let's go back one more time to Ethan and see what we can ask. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about asking, what do we love Barcelona? Are you good with that? Let's send that off. OK, so why do we love Barcelona? Well, it's, it's rich history. There are a lot of nice people. There's great food. It's a lovely place. I don't know about you, but I love Barcelona. So I can only say to you all, 
Thanks for your kind attention. Viva Barcelona! So hopefully all of you got a great bird's eye view of all of the technologies we have, actually not all of the technologies we have here at HPE, uh, but some of the technologies we have here at HPE in our hybrid cloud portfolio and our AI portfolio to help you on your journey. So let me share with you a few updates on what we've been doing on the platform since the last time in Las Vegas and uh, at Frankfurt to discover. In May of this year, we closed the acquisition of OpsRamp. And I am pleased to announce that OpsRamp is now available natively on the HPE GreenLake platform. So when you log in to the platform, you can now subscribe to OpsRamp. Last year at Discover, we introduced the sustainability dashboard. And today, I'm also delighted to announce availability of the HPE Sustainability Insight Center, the next generation of the sustainability dashboard. Sustainability Insight Center has been integrated into OpsRamp to give you the ability to observe and take action, not just on your infrastructure, VMs, containers, and workloads, but also on your carbon consumption across multi-vendor and multi-cloud estates. This carbon insight capability is especially important when you're working with a workload like AI. The immense computational power required for training large language models, often involving vast data sets and complex algorithms, contributes substantially to energy consumption. The same is true for inference, as once these models are put into production and they start replying to queries, large amounts of energy are again consumed. Let's just take a look at one frequently used LLM. It's estimated that 1,200 megawatt hours are used to train the model, and then further tuning results in even more energy being consumed. And it's estimated that in one day alone, the model consumes 250 megawatt hours which is actually equivalent to 10 football matches being played at FC Barcelona at Camp Nou. And this is where the Sustainability Insights Center, now powered by OpsRamp, can help discover, monitor, and track the carbon footprint of the infrastructure that's running your AI workloads. And it doesn't matter if you're training, fine-tuning, or inferencing a new model. Further enhancements will provide insights on the adjustments you can make to optimize your energy usage. So stay tuned for more developments in this area. So with that, I'd like to invite one of the customers we've been co-innovating with within the CTO office to join me on the stage, Suni Bastrop from Danfoss, and to share some of his journey on sustainability with us. But before that, let's roll a small video to hear about the Danfoss mission. We know how to build an energy-efficient future in district energy. But we need to work together. By breaking down barriers, collaborating and sharing ideas, to truly optimize resources and transform how we live. With Dan Foss Lean Heat, we bridge decades of experience with state-of-the-art software cloud, and AI solutions to empower you, to unite siloed processes, and leverage the entire district energy system so we can use intelligent data to plan, build, and monitor the heart of our growing cities, from people to production. Together, we can create healthier environments and a greener future. Lean on us for one holistic solution. So please welcome Sune Bastrop to the stage. Barcelona. 
Vanessa. Thank you, Vilma. It's great to see you again. Thanks, you too. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Danfoss and what you do? Just a little bit more color than the video? Right, absolutely. So, we are a family owned uh, manufacturing engineering company. Uh, and we work with decarbonizing some of the most heavy industries, right? So, we are in mobile hydraulics. So, when you see a combine or a tractor out there on the field, two thirds of the value on some of those machines, that's our product inside mechanical, electrical, the software systems in those machines, right? Construction, uh, when you see cranes, dumpers. We're in heating and cooling business, so cooling everything from residential facilities like you know, conference centers like this, houses, data centers. Heating is all the movie, right? Um, and then we're in power electronics, so everything that literally moves when you have a baggage belt in the airport or when you're in the elevator. Um, and power modules for electrical vehicles and wind turbines, so a pretty wide portfolio. So, uh, and, and for me, I'm, I'm head of IT and I also lead our digital uh, organization. So a good mix of classical IT and digital transformation. So big machines, decarbonization, not much machine learning in AI. Would that be a true statement or am oh, I completely off the mark? I, I think we've been working with AI and, and machine learning for some time, right? And it, it's, a, it's a lot of use cases. You, you saw the movie here, right? Um, but it, it's also, it, it's really deep into our value chain. So it's difficult to do AI on a system like this. You have the heat factory, you have the grids, uh, you, you have the residential at the end. So we have hundreds and thousands of, of sensors here. And, and the data that we pull in is something that we cannot compute with our minds, right? Um, we couple that with external data sources. It can be weather data so that we can preheat or pre-cool. And, and by that, we can actually cut a significant amount of energy in those systems. And at the same time, we can deliver superior comfort to our customers. And yeah, I think other examples would be autonomous uh, vehicles uh, that we work on with off-road uh, cases, right? Or it, it would be supermarkets where we balance also the cold chains in, in supermarkets. And what do you, uh, how, what's your view on Gen AI and how applicable is it to Danfoss uh, as other industries are contemplating you know, improving their businesses with it? How do you see both your business opportunity and using it you know, within the IT organization? Right. So, so for us, it, it gives a ton of uh, advantages, right? We, we would not be able to run some of those advanced systems uh, without. But I also think for, for us as, as IT leaders, right, it, we bear a huge responsibility. We just heard about the energy consumption that you mentioned, yeah. right? And when we look at some of those systems applying AI, we can really do a big difference. And we've been collaborating also on optimizing the energy ecosystem around data centers together where we, with some of the technologies, are actually able to cut up to 50% of the cooling energy required in a data center compared to traditional uh, cooling technologies. And we can use the excess heat coming out of those data centers, right, that it doesn't go to waste. And then we can make sure that all of that is integrated into to the dashboard and, and that we can really optimize the systems that, uh, that we work with. So there is a lot of use cases for Gen AI. And do you think, uh, and I'm assuming that you are also working with other businesses to help uh, make sure that, you know, the Danfoss solutions are integrated into solving their sustainability challenges with Gen AI? Absolutely. So for us, sustainability is a team, team sport, right, that goes across the full of our company. And we put up requirements for our partners as well, right? So when it comes to the effectiveness and within our company, we work with our partners to make sure that we take optimum usage out of their platforms. And then we have the other use case for AI, which is what we just saw, right? It's where it gets deeply integrated into our core business. And here we need to work much closer with our partners because we need to understand that, you know, our mutual businesses, the ecosystem of our customers, and, and it's deep, deep, deep integrations, right? And it's long partnerships. So it's important for us that when we collaborate on these things that we do that with partners that we really trust and with partners where we have a common value proposition, right, uh, in the market. So it's, it's an interesting viewpoint, uh, Sune. I think uh, what you're saying is as we go down this journey of Gen AI, it's really important that as we're kind of carving new ground that we work with partners that we trust and that we've kind of got long, deep relationships with uh, because we're we're going to be forging new things together. Absolutely, absolutely. And what, what are you last parting words uh, 
what, what advice would you give to the audience or what do you want to see more from HPE as we go over the next uh, couple of years? Well, already today we are very satisfied GreenLake customer, right? So uh, we have a number of, of GreenLake instances running. Um, and I think with the announcement that we heard from Antonio yesterday on the AI part and also what Dennis just shared with us, it's very natural for us that we'll extend the GreenLake usage for us in the company into the AI uh, space because there is nothing more natural than placing those systems just next to our enterprise systems. That's where we have all of our data uh, and, and that's where we need the speed uh, between those systems. So I think we'll be doing a lot more together on AI going forward. No, oh, that's great. Well, it's great to work with you and uh, we really do actually appreciate all of your feedback that you give us you know, every day probably uh, and working with our teams in the field and in the CTO office and across the company. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sunei. Thank you. Great partner, Sunei. So as you've heard from Dennis and you saw in the uh, demonstration, HPE GreenLake has a comprehensive set of SaaS offers to manage, observe, and protect your data and your AI models. So with those offers, you can choose to either subscribe to them individually, but we've also added an option to integrate them into a single bundle with a single subscription so we can reduce your cost and complexity. So with that, I'm happy to announce the HPE GreenLake Hybrid Operations Software Suite. And the Hybrid Operations Software Suite brings together our Esmeral software, OpsRamp with the Sustainability Insights Center integrated, and our data protection suite for disaster recovery and backup. This is a world-class hybrid cloud platform-based SaaS portfolio and enables you to manage, observe, and protect your data and your workloads from edge to cloud. So as you can see and you've heard here today, deploying AI requires a combination of infrastructure and software, ideally tuned to the life cycle and the part of the life cycle that you're in. It's actually pretty complex. And this is why we're introducing our private cloud solutions for AI. By extending our private cloud portfolio to introduce solutions specifically designed for AI workloads, we are bringing together infrastructure and software tuned for AI. And this private cloud solution for AI is based on our newly announced enterprise computing solution for Gen AI, our newly enhanced HPE GreenLake for file storage, HPE OpsRamp, and Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault. And all of this is available through HPE GreenLake Flex Solutions delivered as a service. Now you may have noticed that we included Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault as part of the solution. Cyber resilience continues to be top of mind for enterprises. And the negative side of AI is that the bad guys will use AI to increase the speed and effectiveness of their attacks. And the vault is your protection against that. So let's run a quick video to demonstrate its capabilities. Ransomware protection is vital, but prevention alone is not enough. If an attack happens, how quickly can you recover? Introducing the Zerto Cyber Resilience Vault, an isolated zero trust clean room combined with an immutable data vault that saves the day when all else fails. Even better, Zerto's vault uses best in class solutions every step of the way. HPE Electra, HPE ProLiant, HPE Aruba Networking, and of course, Zerto, the leader in resilient data protection. Bottom line, rapid air-gapped recovery that protects, detects, and responds to the worst ransomware attacks. So, my next guest is with NTT Data. He has deep IT knowledge and experience, and he's helped modernize some of the largest global service providers in the world. 
He's helped lead digital transformations across Europe, and he's now come full circle back to his hometown in Barcelona. Please welcome Alberto Valero to the stage to share his experiences with us and impart some wisdom on his journey to where he is today in his career. Alberto? Very good, thanks. Good, good to see us. So, uh, you have, uh, we had a great conversation last week, and uh, you have been, um, you've had a great career, and you're a thought leader and a visionary in the cloud transformation journey with many large service providers, which means that you've, you know, seen it, you've been there, done it, and seen it all. And so, you know, we've talked about a lot here today, but as you reflect on what you've seen and what you see going forward, can you tell the audience what you think is the single biggest challenge for CIOs today? Sure, Fidelma. But first of all, let me say to everyone, Benvinguts a Barcelona. I hope we are treating you well and giving you the warmth of our people. So now you just need to give me your warmth back. Thank you. <laughs> now I feel better. You feel better? Yes. That's good. So basically, uh, it's the complexity is the lack of operational integration. And I'm talking about operational data. So CIOs are struggling with the disparity of tools, delivery models, siloed operations, uh, hybrid uh, environments, hybrid reality of evolving portfolios, which are actually evolving towards cloud, becoming more complex, containers, microservices. So that complexity is the biggest challenge for uh, CIOs today. So you have looked at a lot of tools over your career. And you came, you know, we met uh, as we were looking at the acquisition of OpsRamp. And, and tell me why you chose OpsRamp, you know, in, in many of your, uh, your different, um, you know, uh, parts of your career with uh, service providers. What does, what does it give to you? How do you, how does it help you? And, and also, like, how do you see it different to other tools in the marketplace? Sure. So we could tell that Opsram was a cloud native solution, very powerful in the cloud, and it had a clear mission to simplify the complexity, organize the chaos. And it has three distinct uh, traits. Number one, it's a true AI ops end to end capability. There are very few ones that can have that end to end capability from observability going through big data and machine learning at the core and ending with insights and automation. It might not be the best at each and every step of the process, but it's definitely the one that covers the full spectrum that is required to provide real-time insights at the end. That's number one. Number two, it's about the speed of adoption. So Opsram is very easy to onboard new customers. It's especially good for multi-client environments, and that's very important for managed service providers like uh, Entity Data. And it's also very quick to deploy, and the time to value is uh, hard to believe. So it's a bit too, too, too good to be true, is what we need to tell the customers. Every time we, uh, we face that uh, resistance, we just need to show that actually it gives the results in weeks instead of months. And number three, and most importantly, the can-do attitude of the partnership. So Opsram has always been committed to make you succeed in the marketplace. They are not just thinking about, oh, we need to sell to you, but they are thinking, how can we make you more successful? And that can-do attitude, it's uh, unparalleled. That's great to hear. It's always actually about the people and the culture in the sure. end. We, the, we'll figure out the technology. So. What advice would you give to CIOs on Gen AI? Hmm. Gen AI. Gen AI. Everyone is talking about that. It's the great hype of today. And every, of the year. Yes, and everyone is thinking that it's going to make magic all, all of, on its own. Well, let me tell you something, my friends here. In IT operations, we cannot take shortcuts. And you need to go, or we need to go together through the logical steps of evolution before we can get the most out of uh, generative AI. So first of all, take control of your operational data, ingest all the data, 
manage, send all those mountains of data into your data lake of OpsRAM. Then you can apply the machine learning algorithms, let them do the magic. You will then get the, the holy grail of any CIO, which is to actually sit down under a palm tree, enjoying a piña colada and looking at the vis real time, uh, vis real -time visibility dashboard. of the full uh, entire uh, digital uh, state that they have to manage. And then once you get there, you'll be able to actually multiply the effects with generative AI when it comes to the chat ops space with natural language processing. That's great. So uh, clearly you have a lot of experience, but a lot more to impart. And uh, I wish you well back here in Barcelona. And thank you for sharing your insights with us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Alberto. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. So the overarching theme is clear. AI is not just a technological leap, it's a cultural shift. It's a shift that impacts how we work, how we innovate, how we secure and share data, and how we run and transform our businesses. Before today, you may have thought artificial intelligence was going to solve all your problems. But in fact, it's clear you need a trusted partner who can help you solve the complex problems that AI brings. The HPE GreenLake cloud platform helps you manage, observe, and protect your hybrid infrastructure, data, and models from edge to cloud. HPE GreenLake is the hybrid cloud for all. Thank you, and viva Barcelona. Gracias.